they've got serious money already in, invested in the club with MSP. And so separating their bid away now with, with MSD, not MSP, uh, we've got to be careful on all these initials. Uh, it could be an interesting one to follow. And uh, there's a lot of rumours that they progressed further with Mashiri than some of the others. So we'll have to wait and see. Wait. And of course, the last one themselves, let me not forget, is Mr. Mashiri himself. Uh, he's one that nobody really talked about. Now, don't forget, he still you know, owns a controlling interest in the club. And that gives him quite a lot of rights. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see one of these groups actually link up with him in some way. He may have to, you know, we've always said he's going to, everybody's been saying that publicly he may get written off his 450 million investment. But I think if he's prepared to wait uh, to get paid out at some time in the future and rescue some of his investment, that could be an edge that could give one of these investment groups the way forward. So there's a lot of cards to be played at the moment. The biggest issue, and everybody's got to focus on this, is how we're going to try and reduce the debt for Everton. And all those investors that are coming in, and it's been it's been said that you know the magic number has been four hundred. I think I mentioned it last last podcast, uh, and that's the number that already quite a few have already put forward. Four hundred would be put towards lowering debt. I'd like to see more equity coming in and try and get the debt lower if possible. Maybe up to six hundred could be put into the club. It would be very helpful. Uh, allow us to finish the stadium, give the club some working capital, uh, and then completely restructure the debt uh, with a lot of it paid off. So. That's going to be the most important thing. And also the speed of the process will be important as well for Everton um, and getting some stability. It may not be the final deal to get everything done. It's done quickly, but at least one preferred bidder with a sensible plan put in place would calm everything down and give everybody some uh, some stability. So it's, it's a fascinating few days. It's going to get very uh, heated over the next few days as well. I'm watching everything I can, talking to all my sources that I can, and... Uh, we just have to watch things carefully and see how it goes. So to sort of sum up, Keith, that that brilliant few points in there about the different potential ownerships that could come in, is Mashiri now in a place potentially to hold a bidding war? And actually, out of the seven that you've discussed there, including Mashiri himself, who is your preferred sort of who would be your preferred takeover? Who would you like to see come into the club and stabilize the ship? Well, I don't necessarily think it's necessarily a bidding war is the right way to look at it. It's um it, again, a lot depends on how Mashiri wants to actually look at what is the win. Is it getting some of his own money back or is it handing it over to the best potential solution for the club long term? Now, those two things can be conflicting sometimes. And so we've got to watch how he does this. Uh, don't forget, he did pick 777 and spoke up very highly about them. And that was proven to be a huge mistake. So we've got to see how Mashiri acts going forward and whether it's as I say, salvaging part of his 450 million or genuinely ensuring the best solution for Everton. Um, some of those things may be conflicting because it may be that more goes into paying off debt from other the other debt holders rather than actually going to Mashiri's pocket. So it's a difficult thing. And I understand both points of view, um, but it's going to be a difficult decision to make going forward. Of all the bidders, I think there's three or four there that um, are credible. I'm particularly attracted to the Dan Fried, Friedkin one, which has not uh, raised a lot of uh, eyebrows and headlines mainly. But I think from what I heard about what he's done with Roma, I was really encouraged about that. Uh, obviously, if Everton and Roma end up in the Champions League, we've got that problem of um, uh, of conflict. But that would be a lovely problem to have, I think, for most, uh, most Everton fans. And I think we're, we're some time away from that. But nevertheless, something that has to be planned for in the future. Uh, MSP, of course, depending on who they, they partner up with, would be very interesting. Another good record uh, of, of, of uh, partnerships there. So I think those two um, would be very interesting. I'm not so keen on the uh, AJ Bell, George Downing uh, group with MSD, purely because I believe, and I could be completely wrong on this, but my, my belief is that MSD would be that putting more debt in place on that deal. And it's just purely the debt uh, and the increase in debt that would uh, make me be concerned a bit further about that. So the ones that put in the most equity and pay off the debt will be the ones that I'll be supporting. And I'll do all I can to help them to understand the club and where it should be going and what it can be. And Keith, to sort of wrap this segment up entirely, can you give a can you please give us a sort of a rough timeline of events, how you expect this to play out potentially, and what the next few weeks and months could look like for the club with uh, you know a potential few offers coming in? 
Well, what we're going to hope for is that a preferred bidder does come out of this group in fairly short order. I'd hope in the next two weeks that there is a preferred bidder named. And that alone would be enough, I think, to calm things down and to, to move forward. And we get some sort of idea of the structure that they're looking to impose. Now, if they're not, um, you know, John Texter, and they have to get owners and directors approval, that can take up to six weeks for the Premier League. But all those things should be a formality, given the quality of the bidders we're now talking about. I don't think any of them are really in a 777 situation. So I feel quite comfortable that we're going to be able to uh, to move ahead. The main thing is bringing to an end the speculation and let the process begin to get it done. I've always been happy enough to allow this season for it all to calm down and to uh, to see you know, guarantees given short term on debt, repayment, etc., money, working capital in the club. I've got no problem with that. So it may take longer to get the whole transaction finally completed, but I think there'll be enough uh, security and stability there the club to, to move forward so i hope in the next two weeks a preferred bidder and then if they can speak to us and give us some idea of a structure that would be a really great solution and i'd be very happy with that if we can get that sort of timeline however what i wish for and what actually happens around football clubs are never the two things and they could come down to two or three groups continually getting extensions on this sort of thing and mashiri deciding how he's going to play it so a lot in mr mashiri's hands in terms of the timeline uh, but I'm hoping, as I say, for two weeks, it could go to a month, but we'll have to wait and see.